do believe that they live in the same house. If you think we're waxworks, you ought to pay. Waxworks weren't made to be looked at for nothing, all right. If you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I'm sure, I'm very sorry. Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle, for Tweedledum said Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new racket. I know what you're thinking, but it ain't so, Al, no. Yeah, cos if it was so, it might be. And if it were so, it would be. But as it is, and it ain't. That's logic. I was thinking... Which is the best way out of these woods? It's getting so dark. Would you tell me, please? First boy. <laughs> Next boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you become wrong. The first thing you do in a visit is say, Adjutant. And shake hands. <laughs> Red is enough for one dance. Yeah, we would never do to say, how do you do, do now? Because you've, you've got, got beyond, beyond that somehow. I hope you're not much tired. Ah, all right, but, sir, uh, thank you very much for asking. So much obliged. So you like poetry? Yes. Pretty well. Some poetry. Would you tell me the way out of the wood? What should I recite to her? The walls and the carpenter is the longest. How long is it? I'll tell you what. I'll do the walrus and the carpenter. Great, sir. If it's very long, could you tell me first? The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. Did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright, and this was odd, because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily, because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet as wet could be, the sand as dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no clouds were in the sky. No birds were flying over it. There were no birds to fly. The walls in the carpenter. They're walking close at hand. They wet like anything to see. Such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose the walls, sir, that they could get it clear? Odds are, sir, said the carpenter, and shed a bit of tear. The oysters, come and walk with us. The walrus did beseech. Pleasant walk, pleasant walk, along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. The oldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The oldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. The four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, more and more and more. All hopping through the frothy waves, and scrambling to the shore. The walls and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. Of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and where the pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried. Before we have our chat, for some of us are out of breath, and all of us are fat. No hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Vinegar and pepper, besides, are very good indeed. Now, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us! The oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. Seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick after we'd brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing, but... The butter spread too thick. 
I weep for you. The war was said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out bows of the largest size, old in his pocket handkerchief before the streaming years. Oh, Esther, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? The answer came out. And this was scarcely odd because they'd, they'd eaten, eaten every one. I like the walrus best because he was a little sorry for the poor oysters. He ate more than the carpenter, though. You see, he held his handkerchief in front so that the carpenter couldn't count how many he took. Know what I'm saying? Well, that was mean. Well, then, I like the carpenter best if he didn't eat so many as the walrus. But he took as many as he could get. Well, then they were both very unpleasant characters. Are there any lions and tigers about here? No, nah, it's only the uh, Red King snoring. Come and have a look. Ah, what a lovely sight. Fit to snore his head off. I'm afraid he'll catch cold with land on that damp straw. He's dreaming now. What do you think he's dreaming about? Well, nobody can guess that. Why about you? If he left off dreaming about you, where do you suppose you'd be? Where I am now, of course. Nah, God bless you, nah. Not you. You'd be nowhere. Why, you're only a sort of thing in his dream. If that there king was to wake up now, you'd disappear. Boof. Just like that. Like that. No, not like that. Like that. Uh. If I'm just the sort of thing in his dream, what does that make you, I should like to know? Ditto. A ditto. Ditto! Hush, you'll be waking him if you make so much noise. Well, it's no use you talking about waking him when you're only one of the things in his dream. You know very well you're not real. I am real. I am real. You won't make yourself a bit realer by crying. There's nothing to cry about. <laughs> if I wasn't real, I wouldn't be able to cry. I don't suppose you hope those are real tears. Well, at any rate, I'd better be getting out of this wood, for really it's coming on very dark. Do you think it's going to rain? No, I don't think so. At least not under here, anyhow. But it may rain outside. Well, it may. If it chooses. We've no objections, have we? No. Selfish things. Ah! Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see it? It's only a rattle. It's not a rattlesnake. Only a rattle, quite old and broken. She you know that? We're spoilt, isn't it? There's no need to get so angry about an old rattle. It's not an old rattle. It's a new one. I only bought it yesterday. It's been nice new rattle. Of course, you agree to have a bow. I suppose so. Only she myself was to get dressed up, though. I hope you're good at pinning and tying things. Every one of these has to go on somehow. Yeah. Do you know, it's one of the most serious things that can possibly happen in a battle. Get one's head cut off. Do I look pale? Oh, yes, a little. Yeah, because generally I'm very bright, but they've got a bit of a head I've got a bit of toe pack. I mean, I'm far worse than you. Well, then perhaps you'd better not fight today. Oh, well, we've got to have a bit of a battle. But I don't care for it to go on too long. All right, it's time now. About half four? Well, well five till six in there, didn't you? Yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, she can watch us. Only, uh, you better not come very close. I mean, I generally hit everything I can see when I get really excited. Yeah, and I hit everything whether I can see it or not. Well, then you must hit the trees fairly often. Yeah, <laughs> I don't suppose there'll be a tree left standing by the time we finish. Just then flew down a monstrous crow as black as a tar barrel, which frightened both the heroes so they quite forgot their quarrel. Ah! Stop, stop, stop. 
Let's push back offside. Don't run. Don't run. 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 Run.